Captured. What is going on, YouTube? It's a beautiful day. I'm bringing you guys another commentary. This is a league play match that comes down to the wire. I got a lot of, not a lot of complaints, but I got some complaints in the last one, seeing that people don't like to watch high kill streaks because it's boring. So, I figured I'd change it up for this one. Bring you guys a change of pace. I'm playing with a very special guest, I guess you could say, Mr. Peter Moho, pro Call of Duty player, Call of Duty legend. He was playing with viewers on his stream the other night, and I was lucky enough to get to play with him. So, in this video, I want to talk about something very important that I feel like a lot of players don't really know. They say they know how to do it, but a lot of them just don't. We're just playing to win the game. What does it take to win the game? That's the question I'm asking. And I believe that the most important part is making plays. You gotta be able to make plays when it counts, make things happen when it matters. And the main thing you need to do for that to happen is to not worry about your stats. A lot of people look at the scoreboard a lot, they worry about their KD, you know, they're like, oh, I'm going 22 and 30, I'm having a bad game, but you can go 22 and 30 and have a great game if you just do what your team needs you to do, especially as an SMG player. So you want to make sure that you don't worry about your KD, don't worry about your stats, don't get upset if you're having bad stats. Another thing that it takes is you got to keep your composure. So don't start getting mad like if you're having a bad game. If the connection's bad, everybody likes to complain, like, oh my god, doing them on three bar. This game is so terrible online, I can't handle it. It sucks. You know, it happens to everybody. Everybody's guilty of it. It happens. Whatever. But if you're playing in a tournament, you're playing for money. Even if you're just playing a scrim, you don't want to do that because it just throws your team off their game. It's never good. Another thing you want to do is work together. Obviously, use teamwork, communicate, call out. In hardpoint specifically, I'll talk about some hardpoint specifics to what it takes to win a hardpoint in this video. Hardpoint specifically, the way you can help your team by calling out a lot is when you get a bad spawn. You always want to tell your team if you're like, like if you're getting a bad, if you're getting any kind of spawn, wherever you spawn, just let your team know if they're not paying, if you feel like they're not paying attention or they don't realize, because it usually means that there's somebody lurking around in your base, messing up the spawns, pushing you guys out, so if you tell your team that they're there, then it makes it a lot easier. Another thing is coordinating. If you're an SMG, coordinating with your other SMGs, who's going to hold the hill, who's going to get cutoffs. Which brings me to my next point, which are rolls. Uh, not like rolls of fat, but like, your role in the game. Alright, I'm going to stop being cheesy now, but... Say you're playing, like, objective. You don't have to just sit in the hill all the time. You know, I mean, it's it's you're gonna be the one in the hill most of the time, but you don't have to always sit in the hill and go down with the ship and die in the hill every time. So, like, say for example, on this hill, the store hill. Say you're holding that hill. Your anchor is holding anchor on stables, and you got two guys on boxes, and the whole enemy team is coming from boxes. Now, say your two teammates die at boxes, and your two teammates spawn up at stables. Now you have two decisions. You can either sit in the hill and wait for your teammate to run all the way around, like through the hill, and get the boxes and try and kill them. By that time, they're going to be in the hill. They're going to be all over you. It's not going to be easy to defend it. Or you can just push out, get the cut off yourself, and your teammates spawning up can hop right in the hill and pick up the time. And it saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of effort. It's something that a lot of pro teams do, and a lot of amateur teams don't understand. Obviously, you don't have to like take all this stuff I'm saying 100% seriously, I'm not a pro player or anything, but I consider myself a decent player. Take everything with a grain of salt. But yeah, you don't have to stick to your, like, your, your book written role. You can get creative. If you think you'll make a play that it's going to help your team a lot, then go for it. My role, by the way, I play SMG. I usually play like the support sort of cutoffs role. I'm good at killing people outside the hard point. And you always want to make sure that when, you, when you're when you playing hardpoint, you want to defend the hill from outside. You never want to... Oh, by the way, I, saw, I see this guy right here. I thought he was a teammate. So I didn't shoot him right away. I felt kind of stupid there. But, um... You always want to make sure you defend the hardpoint from outside the hill. Get the cutoffs. Keep him from getting in. Because it's always a lot easier to get kills when... When they're not breathing down your neck. Always pressuring you. And you want to keep the pressure on them at all times. So... With the um, 
with keeping pressure on you, the other team, you always want to make sure that you're keeping them spawning away as far away as possible in hard point. You never want them, like, for this hill, you don't want them to spawn unstable. You want your team to spawn unstable, or in gas station even. And, like, right here, I spawned sort of close, but not as close as I could have if we had the hill. So, you always want to make sure that your team is spawning as close as possible. That's the best thing to happen. When you're setting up in a hard point, you always want to set up, like, in a head glitch. Or if you're an SMG who's, like, playing aggressively like I do a lot, you want to hug your corners and catch the other team off guard. You never want to... You want to try to avoid, like, a 1v1 gunfight as much as possible. You know, you don't want to run out and give them free kills and let them pick you off and break the hill easily. That's never fun. And then another thing you gotta do in hardpoint a lot, which you see me do right here, is rotating early to the next hardpoint, so that you can get the time on that. If you get, like, when you rotate early, you're in a good position to, s to get a lot of time early. And if you get, say, like, 40 points on every hill, and the other team gets 20 points on every hill, then that's an easy win, because obviously you're getting 40 points, they're getting 20. It's, it's pretty simple. Like, a lot of people overcomplicate the game. Which, there are a lot of things you have to do, it's it's like kind of complicated, but you should get to the point where it's just muscle memory. Everything seems natural. Because it's really just a lot of it's common sense, and you just need to like think about it as you're playing it. So, right here, I get the nice two-piece. It's always good, helps my team out, and then I die. But that's okay. Which brings me to my next point. Being clutch. Which, there's a lot of different definitions for being clutch, so... I like Rambo's definition a lot. He says that, or he said in one of his videos, that being clutch is like... When you win a situation that you're not expected to win, you're not supposed to win. For example, in Search and Destroy, if it's a 1v3, and you're the one person, you kill all three enemy players, then you just clutch that round. You made a clutch play, because you weren't expected to win that, and you took advantage of of the other team not playing it right, and you took advantage of their mistakes. That's the main thing, you want to take advantage of the other team's mistakes if you want to be a top player. So that's one definition of being clutch, I like that one. The other one is, say you win, like, say it's coming down to the very last hill of the match, your team is neck and neck with the other team, say it's on this map, it's coming down to the green hill, and you meet the other anchor on stables, and you win that gunfight. That could be like considered a clutch gunfight because it was a one v one that you obviously you want to avoid one v ones as much as possible in any game. But say you have to get into that one v one, you have to get in that situation. You make the best of it. That's what I feel like makes a lot of players elite players is they can they have I've said this before they have the teamwork. They know what it takes. They work together. But if they have to make a clutch play, they have to make an individual play, then they're able to do it. So that's being clutch. And the other thing is playing your best when it matters. Say there's money on the line, it's a tournament match. You always want to play your best. You want to show up on land, you know, you don't want to be known as a warrior. A lot of people throw that term around a lot. But you want to show up on land, you want to do play your best. Do what it takes for your team to win, because then you'll be remembered as a great player. That's what it's all about. Anyways, I'm going to talk about the game for a little bit, because this is when it gets pretty intense. We're down by, what is it, 36 points right here. And we have to hold like all the time on this hill, and then a good amount of time on the next hill if we want to win. So our teammates are rotated. I'm holding the hill. I got my teammate in here with me. We're trying to contest. And right there, I guess you could consider it was like a clutch play. Because it was, my teammates had rotated the next hill. I had to hold that off, and I was up against two players. And the second guy didn't really shoot me, but I guess that's, I guess that's like the first definition of being clutch that I was talking about. Is that I took advantage of his mistake, which was not hitting me with a bullet. So I killed the first guy, I killed the second guy, and that's a clutch play, I guess. And now right here, we're coming back. We're about to take the lead right here. We have control on this last hill. It's a really close match. Really close game. And right here is like a big play. This is what I'm talking about when it takes... But I'm saying you have to do what it takes to win and make the play. I'm going to pause the game right here really quick so I can break this down. I'm in the hill, and it's contested. We're down by 10 points, and there's 20 seconds left in the game. So say there was like 12 seconds left, I'd be forced to make a push, run in there, and throw myself at them, and just hope that I could outgun them all and hold the last 10 seconds to win. 
But I know I have a little bit of time to work with, and I see my teammates flanking around, coming in the front door. So what I do is I set up myself so I push them and shoot and distract them when he's coming in the front door. And look, he picks up a three-piece, we take control, and that play right there just won the game. I just made a play that set my team up to win the game. And of course, Moho got the glory because he got the three-piece. He made, he, like, he did the work, he made that play. But I set him up for it by putting myself in that situation, distracting all them, keeping them busy, and that's how you win. That's what it takes, being a good player. Anyway, I went 42 and 23 in this video. If you like it, please like the video, leave a comment with some feedback, subscribe if you enjoy the channel, and as always, hope you guys have a lovely